This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to if you want to set up your own slick looking website or online store. For quite literally yonks, the standard for standard zoom lens has been the 24-70 fixed f-stop lens. But before yonks, we had the 90s, which was a cold, dark era filled with lots of colourful tracksuits. And we had to make do with 28mm as the widest on our standard zoom lens. But even before that, like an eternity ago, like in the times of Gandalf and stuff like that, people had to make do with 35 as the widest. Crazy. But look, this is 2022. We don't have to make do with 35 as the widest. Not even 28. And now 24 is so 2021 because now fixed f-stop standard zoom lens now go to 20 millimeters thanks to Sony. Ooh, look at that wideness. Yes, check out this wide boy, Sony's brand new 20 to 70 millimeter f4. Yeah, all right, I know it's not new news anymore. Yeah, I know by this point, every YouTuber and their dog has already got their video out on this lens already, but I was ill, so there you go. And as they say, better late than get a even higher temperature or something like that. But anyway, even though this is old news and nobody is going to watch this video, as a result, I'm going to tell all five of you who are asleep on the date of announcement why I think this lens is fantastic. Because this lens I have right here, the 24-70 f4, is one of my go-to lenses. Nothing special about it, not particularly great. I like the 24-70 f2.8 also, but it's more expensive, it's bigger, it's heavier, and if I really need the speed, I'll just use primes. Therefore, standard zoom is meant to be a lens of lightness, compactness, and um, convenience. The new one seemingly fits the mold. Well, if you look at the size difference between the old and the new lens, there really isn't much in it. The new one is ever so slightly longer, a little bit wider. It's got a 72 millimeter filter thread versus the 67 on the old one, and a tiny bit heavier. Of course, the new lens uses a lot more posh plastic in its construction. The old one is like a metal barrel, which is nice and robust. The new one, even the thread is plastic. But still, somehow, it feels quite premium. I think it's because they put all these bits on it, all the extras, buttons and stuff like that. It looks and feels good. The balance is great even on lighter bodies like the a7c too, but the next and most obvious reason to love this lens is the newfound wideness. One of the main points that Sony highlighted about this lens is that it's made for vloggers. Because it now goes to 20 millimeters, it will work well when you're vlogging using active stabilization because otherwise your footage is going to look super shaky when you're vlogging and you're walking about. You'll need active stabilization, so therefore you've got 20 millimeters because it's wider and active stabilization has a 1.1 times crop. So use 20 millimeters because it's effectively 22 millimeters. 24 millimeters with active steady shot is a bit tight. Without it, just about fine. 20 millimeter with or without active steady shot crop allows framing of stuff other than your big fat face. It seems like Sony had already tested the water with the 20mm equivalent focal length with active stabilisation on their vlogging camera, the ZV-1F. In my opinion, 24mm is a little bit tight for vlogging. 20mm with a 1.1 times crop is about 22mm, which is alright. Just alright for vlogging. But anyway, I've been using the Panasonic 20 to 60 millimeter lens for vlogging. I think that's a great lens because it's wide enough and it's got enough reach for B-roll stuff. It has practically the most useful focal lengths for most vloggers and photographers, but it lacks the constant max aperture throughout the range that the Sony has, and the Sony lens has a little more reach. They have absolutely nailed it with this lens. What's more, this is a much more useful lens than the 16 to 35 because that just goes from really wide to just plain wide. So you probably don't need that lens for vlogging anymore and you probably don't need a 24 to 70 f4. This is good enough, mostly. Just not good enough at the wide end. Just couple load of this, this is the 24 to 70 f4 and the corners right here, they should be not so hot. Right over here, over here. That's right, this Sony's eye zoom not so nice in the corners at f4 and 24mm. Actually, it's just a load of shizer at 24mm anywhere other than dead centre, and it doesn't get any better stop down. Well, if you like looking at MTF charts, then the new lens should be better at 24mm. At 20mm, it will definitely be better, because the old lens doesn't go that far. 
The 2070mm f4 is far better at 24mm wide open than the 2470 f4. It's sharp throughout the frame other than the extreme corners. It's magic, not tragic. But when you open up the raw file, that's when the magic trick gets pooped on from a great height. Kind of like the Masked Magician with defecating. Because when you look at that, that looks a little bit different to the JPEG, doesn't it? So in the menu system, I can switch some of the lens compensations off. I can switch off vignetting and also chromatic aberration. Distortion stays on auto and I can kind of see why. Look at those bending lines. Surely that's halfway towards being a fisheye. And those corners are so dark, you have to wonder whether it actually covers the whole imaging circle. But nonetheless, once distortion correction is applied, it works. It looks fine, apart from the very extreme corners. And look, this is not something that's just suddenly happened. There are other Sony lenses that need that distortion correction, as well as chromatic aberration correction and the vignetting correction to make it looking sweet. You will get some nice sharp images from the zoom lens, even at the wide end, with low chromatic aberration. It produces very crisp images because they've chucked a load of fancy stuff in. Two advanced spherical, three ED elements. Bokeh looks quite pleasing too. And you can get some seriously close-up shots with a closer, closest focusing distance. This is now an F4 standard zoom that you can confidently get great results at both ends of the zoom range, not just the middle bits. This Sony 20-70mm to f4 is a fantastic lens, it's a killer lens. I could say it's almost perfect. Almost, because it's really bloody expensive. That is, if you're buying in UK, because it costs £1,399, that's about $1,600. That's a whole world of scrotum aching pain right there. I mean, a 24-70mm to f2.8 G Master II is £2,099. Not too much more, about £600 more. Or for £300 more than the 2070, you can get the original G Master 24-70 f2.8. Of course, I understand that things in the UK generally cost more anyway. There's VAT. On top of that, there's inflation and all that shiz, Brexit, whatever. But when you compare it to the price in the States, the UK price tag has never seemed this warped before. Okay, so from B&H, it's $1,098. Converted to pounds, it's £890. I mean, even if you were to order from B&H and pay the import fee of having it delivered to you in the UK, there's still a £335 price difference. Bonkers. For the UK price of this lens, you can fly to New York, go to B&H, buy the lens, pay New York sales tax, fly back, go through customs and declare it and pay the import fees, and that's still approximately the same cost as you'd pay for buying a lens from UK shop. It's just a shame because before the 2470 f4 was the affordable option. Now, not so much. But oh, by the way, it's very low on lens breathing, yay! Yes, indeed, let's pop open the champagne, shall we? But look, the lens price thing is all relative. All relative to where you're living, that is. But it is what it is. The 24-70 f4 has been a useful lens for me, but not my most used. Adding that 20mm wideness and being optically stronger will make this a much better all-round of a lens. And I guess those added benefits have to come at a price. Quite literally, the price. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to set up your own domain, online retail space or website, it's super simple to get started and make your next move with Squarespace. With an easy to use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24-7 customer service, you can try it out with a 14-day free trial and get 10% off your first order with this link and discount code. That's clearly been in some rougher parts of the neighbourhood. Somebody's been trying to take that, haven't they? Maybe just a visitor came along and thought, oh, I want a souvenir. I don't really fancy the clothes. Um, I just fancy that. 